Hey everyone, with the Shadowlands release just around the corner, we thought this was the perfect opportunity to update you all on which covenants the top PvPers will be choosing once they hit max level. In this guide, we'll be going over all of the relevant specs and covering what your best options are along with any potential alternative choices. We'll start off with the most popular covenant choice for most classes, which is Kyrian. If you're a warrior, then you'll definitely be wanting to go Kyrian as it's the best in PvP for all of your specs. Spear of Bastion is an incredibly powerful and versatile ability on a 1 minute CD. It's predominantly used for damage, locking down one or multiple targets in the same location, allowing you to slaughter them. You could also use it as a peeling mechanic, typically against melee chasing you or your partners down. Having the File of Serenity is also a nice safety measure defensive cooldown as warriors lack self-healing. This could be used as a defensive CD where you're on the brink of death. Rogues are another melee class that will be favoring the Kyrian Covenant. Having Echoing Reprimand is nice for extra burst pressure on a particularly low cooldown, making it solid for many offensive setups throughout an arena match. Another class that will benefit extremely from Kyrian would be Hunter, having all three specs being incredibly powerful with it. After the Necrolords and Benthyr nerfs to Hunter abilities, Resonating Arrow becomes the most powerful one. It allows you to shoot out of line of sight against enemy players, which, as you can guess, is an extremely powerful mechanic, allowing you to keep up your pressure. Bear in mind, though, that there is also a bug with it working on live servers, making it a bit stronger than intended. If anyone walks in or out of the arrow's radius, then the hunter's target will get the 4 second debuff anyway, allowing him to shoot through walls. But even without this bug, it's still looking like it will perform the best unless they buff the other covenants. Rep Paladins are another spec to take up Kyrian, which may be a surprise to some, especially those PvE players. While Venther may be the highest single target spec for Rhett, Kyrian is better as Divine Toll has the chance to do insane single target burst damage with the Ringing Clarity Conduit. Assuming this conduit doesn't get nerfed, Kyrian will remain the best for Rhett Paladins. Ferals and Balanced Druids will also enjoy picking up this Covenant, getting an ability similar to Mop's Symbiosis being Kindred Spirits. This Covenant ability allows you to grant your teammate or yourself with more damage or healing, depending on which target you provide this buff to. Mostly though, you can just use it on yourself. It makes it a bit more versatile as you could change it up depending on if you want more damage or healing in certain matchups or situations during a game. With that being said, it's worth pointing out that some Feral Druids are considering going Night Fae for the crazy burst you can deal with Convoke the Spirits. Although if you're mostly a fan of playing melee cleaves or with a hunter, you'll struggle to find opportunities to make the most of the Night Fae class ability as enemy teams will be far more likely to interrupt it if you don't have a caster DPS partner. So, we suggest picking up Kyrian at first unless you intend to play melee caster comps and want the burst potential that the Night Fae provides ferals. Lastly, we have another melee spec favoring Kyrian, which is Windwalker Monk. Due to the Venthyr nerfs of the Fallen Monk being so heavy, Windwalkers now opt to play with Weapons of Order. This gives Windwalkers an absurd amount of extra damage, being another devastating offensive CD that they can add to their arsenal. Alright, that covers the Kyrian, allowing us to move on to our second most popular covenant choice, Venthyr. One class that will favor Venthyr above all others will be Mage, as it's looking to be the best for all three specs. The main reason for this is that Door of Shadows is a nice way of adding extra mobility to mages, giving them more breathing room or potential to land sheeps on enemy healers with more ease. While Mirrors of Torment isn't too spectacular for Arcane, it's very strong for Frost and Fire, gaining increased damage from this Covenant ability. Familiar Predicaments is also an excellent bonus from the Soulbind Conduits, giving you a reduced duration of Interrupt, Snare, and Root effects, which just adds to the strength of Venthyr for all mage specializations. Another class that benefits a ton from the Venthyr are Priests. They also gain the added Interrupt Reduction and Mobility Cooldown, being excellent for all Priest specs. Although, even after many nerfs to mind games, it still remains a highly powerful Covenant ability. It does a huge amount of extra damage, outweighing all the other options. Enhancement Shamans also gain a ton through the Venthyr Covenant. Having access to Chain Harvest gives them an absurd amount of insane burst damage and healing instantaneously. The reason why it can be instant cast is due to Maelstrom Weapon working in conjunction with Chain Harvest. So, if you have 5 stacks, you can make your Chain Harvest explode instantly. Door of Shadows is also a welcome sight, seeing as how Enhancement Shamans lack mobility. Next up, despite the Fallen Order nerfs, Mistweaver Monks are still taking Benthyr as well. 
The Fallen Order ability still provides you with an excellent amount of on-demand healing for you or your partners. Beyond that, Door of Shadows adds to the huge arsenal of mobility CDs that Mistweavers have access to. You can use it to get out of trouble or even offensively when wanting to look for CC onto enemy healers. Another healer wanting to pick up Benthyr will be Holy Paladins. While this is one of the hardest choices due to being a close contender to Kyrian and Necrolord, Benthyr just barely edges it out. Ashen Hollow is also a powerful CD, but being on a 4 minute timer, as well as an ability placed on the ground, can make it easier to deal with. The main thing that puts Benthyr ahead is the power of familiar predicaments, as the interruption reduction stacks with concentration aura, reducing the interrupt effects significantly. Alright, on to the second to last covenant, we see quite a variety of niche specs wanting to tag alongside the Necrolord. The one class that will want all specs in Necrolord, which also fits in well aesthetically, will be Death Knights. Both DK specs are a fan of Necrolord as it gives them the Abomination Limp. It gives them extra damage, but more importantly it acts like an AoE death grip, pulling enemies toward you. This makes it easier for uptime and also adds to your disruption tools, being quite annoying for many casters. Shamans will also be Necrolord fans, with the exception of Enhancement choosing Benthyr, which was explained earlier. For Resto and Elemental Shamans, Primordial Wave is an excellent addition to their spells. It allows Resto Shamans to essentially have an extra rip time. As for Elemental Shamans, it makes them keep up their Flame Shock debuff with more ease, essential for dishing out extra damage. Fleshcraft also becomes increasingly powerful with Ultimate Form, allowing you to immune CC on yourself during the cast time and after the channel for some time. The last spec that wants Necrolord is also the last healer spec that we haven't mentioned, being Restoration Druids. A druid's main attraction with this covenant is having Adaptive Swarm. It goes hand in hand with the design of Restoration Druids Hot Playstyle, boosting your consistent healing throughout the arena games. Ultimate Form will also be a nice mechanic that druids could try to use to outplay certain CC mechanics. Moving on to our last covenant, we've got two classes favoring the Night Fae over any others, the first of which is Demon Hunters. The main benefit here is that Demon Hunters get a hold of The Hunt, a powerful hard-hitting ability that is likely to force big defensive cooldowns or evaporate the target, making Night Fae the best choice for them. Having Soul Shape is also a nice extra mobility CD, which could be used to chase down targets or kite for some time. And that brings us to our final class, Warlocks. Their decision to go with the Night Fae is primarily due to the nature of Warlock gameplay right now. Given that your success as Warlock is largely dependent on your ability to kite effectively, having access to Soul Shape really plays into that narrative in helping you beat your most difficult matchups, so melee cleaves or just warrior comps in general. The class ability that you get also isn't half bad, as Soul Rot does decent damage if you can get the cast off. Alright, there we have it, that covers all the main specs and which covenants are best suited for them. We hope you all enjoyed this video, and as always, feel free to leave a comment and a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.